All right. I want to do that because James always does that. He starts with all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> it is time for the retro review, which this week is WWE CW from E-C-W. September 4th, E-C-W. 2007. E-C-W. E-C-W. Uh, very, very long time ago. How many years ago is that? Tony, quick math? Quick uh, math? 12. It's like 12? <laughs> no. That's not right, is it? <laughs> 14, six, I think. Six. No, six? no, can't do the math yet. That's I typed a number wrong. It is 12. 14. Uh, 14. 14. Great years. job, Tony. You're doing awesome. This shows You can't catch me awesome. off guard. I had a script I was following, and then you just throw a curveball at me. I don't like it. Uh, so 2007. It's I, I think every time I bring up the ratings for the shows during this time, like it's like so weird because it's of mind how, blowing. how it different it is does now. Blow like, my mind. This ECW show on sci-fi. In 2007, with this show that we're about to, and once we run down this card, you'll be very confused at why this did this well. But wrestling was just different then. This show did a 1.6, <laughs> which I don't think AEW's done that once. No, they yet. even touched the 1.6. So. No, yeah. 1.6, and yes. ECW's in the mud. It's dying. They should cancel that <laughs> brand. <laughs> <laughs> That's Damn, it feels good it. to be. Uh, TNA, <laughs> well, <laughs> whatever it is. EC Dub, EC Dub. Oh, T- yeah, oh, the comp- you oh, you want to talk about the competition? We can talk about the oh, competition. You know what? Yeah, the competition. I guess would, I guess would be TNA. Yeah. Right. I yeah. Would, I guess. Yeah, I think so. Okay. I so think we so. have. Well, we're looking at the September sixth episode, two thousand seven. One two. Oh, uh, maybe you can tell me here what the deal. Are they two hours? Yet? Are they about to go two hours? How's I, the deal here? I think it. I think it's still an hour. Okay. So we have Tom Co defeating the MILF Hunter. Frankie Kazarian is over here. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. Uh, Robert, Rude, door. Robert Rude and unhappy Tracy Brooks walked down to keep an eye on Kaz during the match if you wanted wow. to know the storyline. Son of a bitch. I didn't want to know it. But I that's think okay. Robert Rude was being a, a terrible person to Tracy at the what time. What a son of a bitch. We have Jeremy Borash and Sting and Kurt Angle and Karen Angle interview. Are they interviewing Jeremy Borash? Uh, Sting <laughs> earned a TNA World Tag Team title match by winning a match last week and said he cannot trust the angles. Okay, true. Fair so enough. So Kurt and Sting have tag team, I guess? I don't know. All okay, right. I see. Uh, interview, New Girl and Chris Harris talk about multiple personalities <laughs> of his former friend Dustin Rhodes. So New we're get- oh, oh, they talk about uh, Black Rain? They're talking about the Black Rain, Black Rain? Yeah. Oh, they're going to Black Rain room. They New Girl. Bla- <laughs> Is that the girl that throws Dustin Rhodes in a room and makes him Black Rain? She's acting like That's she doesn't her. know? Yeah, 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 oh, fucking yeah. asshole. <laughs> we got another interview, so we're getting back-to-back-to-back interviews here. Uh, okay. Maybe another one, and then maybe another one after that too. So we got lots of interviews. Uh, we have Jeremy. Oh, this was a sixty-minute adrenaline rush. Was that was going? I oh, think they, so. They must yeah, have this kept must it have been. Right. Yeah. We got Jeremy Borash in Black Machismo and the Abyss. The Abyss. They talk the about. Abyss? They talk about their tag team match tonight. Jay Lethal oh. and Abyss are teaming. Apparently, that's the tag team. What is happening? Okay, that's the tag team thing with sure. Sting and Angle or whatever. Okay, fair enough. Uh, then we have a backstage. Uh, Samoa Joe was backstage with Team Pac Man. Was He's wondering back. Who's back? if they He's should the make Pac-Man G- Jones. Team Pac Man wondering if they should make Samoa Joe their first victim. I'm sure yeah, that I think went they just. Whoop. I think it should whoop his ass. I agree. Then we get a vignette of James Storm with beer. And Mickey James <laughs> went looking for Rhino. Mickey at an, James? Uh, they, Jackie Moore. I don't know why I said Mickey James. <laughs> Mickey me. James is the one that James Storm's murders years That's later. Right. I, I don't know why I said That's, that. But. <laughs> well, we were talking about, yeah, you know. All right, and Jackie Moore. They went looking for Rhino at an AA meeting, which is all oh, kinds no. of humor, I'm sure. Great. Yeah, I love I love exploiting addictions. Uh, then we have Samoa Joe defeats Raven despite interference from AJ Styles. Oh, AJ tried to stop him. Christian Son Cage's boy handcuffed Samoa Joe to the ropes and then gave one of Samoan dancers the concerto. Samoa Christian Joe Cage's the- boy? <laughs> that's what they said. I don't Who's Christian know. Cage's I don't boy? Know. That's what the review said. Who's your boy? Know. Tomko? I don't know. Who uh, maybe. Is it? Oh, maybe. They- no, he wrote Tomko here. I don't uh, know. Samoa Joe okay. beat up AJ Styles. Tomko helped Styles. Christian cream Joe with a steel chair. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> that's cream? That's- that's- there's a lot of cream on the Samoa CCW Joe- show. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Samoa, <laughs> Joe came- Samoa Joe came out with his Samoan heritage dancers. Okay, that's sweet. Okay. Interview via the phone. Rhino called in and said James Storms <laughs> wants to find him. He'll be at No Surrender Sunday. Okay. Rhino got interviewed by a phone? <laughs> via phone. And then New we phone. had the we had the 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 non non tag title 
I'm confused. It it's says a non-title non match for the tag titles, I think. But it says non-tag title yeah, match. Yeah, this just reads like shit, yeah. Okay. Uh, Abyss and the Black Machizo, but, but Machismo, Jay Lethal, defeat Kurt Angle and Sting. Ron what an insane sentence. Like, just think about that for a second. Listen to this. Not okay. that these guys weren't over, and Abyss definitely should have been beating these guys, but Abyss and Jay Lethal beating Kurt Angle and Sting, even in 2007, sounds let me fucking just, weird. Let me just read it down. Midway through the match, Karen Angle trotted down to the ring even though she agreed to stay backstage. Of course she would. Wow, what a Abyss, liar. Little Abyss, fucking who refused to lay his hands on Sting, nailed Kurt Angle with the black hole slam and pinned him for the win. Wow, so, he pins Kurt too? Wow. Father James Mitchell appeared on the stage and pointed at Abyss who stopped everything and chased Mitchell. So there Oh, was that. it must be around the time of their angle where he's his dad and he yeah. shot his dad or yeah. something, yeah. And then Ron the Truth Killings and Pac-Man Jones hit the ring and, Pac -Man? Sp and spray painted Pac on the back of Kurt Angle. Oh my god. This dude's Pac laying down for everybody. Kurt Angle's laying down for everybody. Wow. Yeah. Kurt Angle really trying to help the business. The bastard, I don't remember Ron spray, the painted, Truth Killings. spray painted Pac on Kurt Angle's back. I have no <laughs> recollection of that. That's so weird. I'm surprised and I that didn't show make did the a 1.2. I didn't make the 1. highlight 2 reel. 1.2 for that yeah. show. Yeah. Uh, I also have here some uh, observer notes uh, for around this time, so I'm going to read those off. Okay. This is from uh, Figure 4 Wrestling, uh, issue 636 from September 3rd, 2007. Okay. We're going to go around here, just a general wrestling, not just ECW from the time. We're going to talk a little TNA in here as well, which is actually yeah, give us pretty, a little, tre pretty tremendous. Give us a little clue what's going uh, on in the world. So, September 3rd, 2007, Vince McMahon was approached with the idea of doing a pro wrestling off-season a few times in the past couple months and completely blew it off every time. <laughs> I feel like that's every time that discussion comes up, Vince always says no. I think to this day. He's still <laughs> even, this, yeah. yeah, even now. It's fucking 14 years good later. Thing, good thing Tony Khan wants to run, like, more. He wants to do more. Yeah. He's Vince's What's the guy. thing? People, I mean, people argue the bloated roster thing, which I get in a sense, but, like... That's the way you can give people time off. If you always have names, if you have so many names around, you can give people time off and it won't feel weird because they can just slot in people that are just as over, yeah. if not more, you know? Yeah, it would be perfect, but... Uh, Johnny Ace oh, oh, <laughs> has brought up the name Sid Vicious. Meltzer says, I would guess that's a real long shot. Ace and Vicious had heat for years uh, because Ace was the agent in WWE that suggested Sid try to... Try the kick from the middle rope at the Sin pay-per-view. Oh, maybe an agent in WCW that meant to say. Uh, th so that was Johnny Ace's idea for when Sid broke his fucking tibia and fibula at yeah, Sin I wouldn't blame that on Johnny Ace. He didn't know that was going to happen. That sounds fun to blame Johnny Ace. I think I'm going to blame <laughs> Johnny Ace for that one. Uh, that was pretty much the end of his career, though. In his mid-40s, he's done a couple shows here and there in recent years and is said to be moving all right. Ace was at an indie show this weekend that featured v Sid Vicious versus Jerry Lawler. That sounds like the most indie show ever. That sounds very indie. It was probably <laughs> around your area, dude. <laughs> Did you run that show, actually? Was that you? In Memphis. It was in Memphis, probably. <laughs> Speaking of Johnny Ace, Johnny Ace wanted to... Uh, wanted a meeting with Takeshi Morishima when Morishima was in New York this past weekend. He's very high on him. Noah uh, put the Ixnay on that, uh, citing loyalty to Ring of Honor. Because Morishima, I'm pretty sure at this time, is ROH world champion. Because uh, he beat Homicide in February of 07. So that would, I think that sounds about right. Unless he just dropped it to... Um, to Nigel. I'm not sure. Uh, that should give you an idea of how tight Noah and ROH are because in the grand scheme of the universe, it seems insane to favor ROH over WWE. WWE had approached Morishima a year or so ago when he was down training at Harley Race's school. People had, uh, people had heard that he was potentially a new Terry Gordy and there was interest in putting him on ECW since Masato Tanaka and Tajiri fell through. Oh, wow. That's interesting. I didn't even what know they the? tried to get them. Yeah. Ace pursued it, but Noah shot it down uh, then as well. All of this also seems to indicate that Noah plans on him being a major player for the next several years. Uh, which, I mean, he he's, doesn't really work out exactly that way, but... Because I'm pretty sure he event I think in 09, he does like a a dark, a dark match maybe with Lance Cade as well. Oh, really? I think so. And like, I feel like, yeah, that was, and I don't remember hearing about him after that. <laughs> wow. Uh, Brian Danielson, oddly enough, suffered a serious eye injury in his match with Takeshi Morishima on Saturday night in Manhattan. He suffered a detached retina, Ugh. and the muscles around the eye were loosened to the point where his eyeball rolled back in his head, and you couldn't see <laughs> out of it. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure there's footage of the doctor checking on Brian. It might be in one of the ROH video wires or something, where you, like, you can see he, he cannot 
Like he's Asa Timbaland without yeah. meaning to. Like his oh, no. eyes, like his eyes. Well, his eye will not roll forward. And if you watch the, um, you remember the Wrestling Road Diaries that Colt yeah. Cabana did. Uh, there's a couple scenes in there where Brian is like saying, "I because of this fucked up eye thing, I can sneeze without blinking," and oh. he does it because of that. It's so That's weird. So messed up. Oh. Speaking of TNA, way. here's a fun line that Meltzer wrote here. Yeah, TNA. I hate this show. <laughs> <laughs> Just thought I'd get that out of the way early so there wasn't any confusion. <laughs> uh, the show he's talking about was main evented by Steiners versus Kurt Angle, where if Angle loses, the Steiners get five minutes alone with Karen. I'm assuming that was the episode before the one you just read off. Wow, that's awesome. Well, I, so hate he, 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 I hate this show. <laughs> Uh, we move on to uh, the edition from uh, September 10th, 2007. Uh, this is from Stanford, Connecticut. This must be a press release. Based on independent... Oh, from August 30th, 2007. Based on independent information received from investigators from the Albany County NYDA's office, WWE has today, under the penalty provisions of its wellness policy, issued suspension notices to 10 of its performers for violations. It has been WWE's practice not... To release the names of those who have been suspended, right. but notice has been sent to all the WWE performers with the names of anyone that was suspended under the wellness policy as of November first will be made pub public. So after that point, they said, "Hey, we'll fucking name you, son." Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, here's the names. <laughs> <laughs> Within hours of the WWE press release, the New York Daily News reported that Randy Orton, Charles Haas, Adam Copeland, <laughs> who is Edge in the WWF. Booker T. Huffman, who is Booker T. in the WWF, Shane Helms, Mike Bucci, which is Noma, uh, uh, sorry, Nova or Simon Dean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anthony Corelli, which is Santina Morella, John Hennigan, which is John Morrison, Darren Matthews, which is William Regal, Ken Anderson, which is Ken Kennedy, and Chavo Guerrero were known signature clients. This was 11 names. Only 10 had been suspended. People began debating which guy had gotten off the hook and why. Which one of these people do you think got off the hook, Tony? Canada! <laughs> I think it was Orton, right? Well, yeah, he never really got in trouble ever. When That's what violated. I mean. Yeah, I feel like Orton was probably the one. That <laughs> also, got out of that. I think you violate the policy by just not taking the test, too, right? If they're like, we want you yes, to take a drug, I, and so you just don't Hornswoggle, do it. Hornswoggle years later said, like, got suspended for a violation. He says he just couldn't pee, and he got the same punishment as if he yeah. was doing drugs. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like Randy Orton. He just couldn't pee. <laughs> yeah, do you think so? <laughs> you think Randy Orton just couldn't take a piss that week? <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, that afternoon, Sean Asil, Asel, sorry, author of Sex, Lies, and Headlocks, wrote a column for ESPN that claimed sources close to the investigation had also listed uh, Funaki, Batista, and Chris Masters as clients. We now had way more than 11 names plus Funaki, which fascinated people. Also, Eugene and Crime Time were released. <laughs> just ch nothing to do with that. They just fucking got rid of them. <laughs> That's so like crazy that that many people on one hit. Because I'm pretty sure it came out that like this one doctor or pharmacy or something. I don't know the verbiage for it. Was like providing just shit to all these wrestlers just. Just cause. Under the table kind of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, Ric Flair gave his notice a couple weeks back. We don't have a lot of details, but this really had nothing to do with the current drug scandal. It may be a leverage ploy more than anything else, but I cannot fathom him going to TNA <laughs> unless he really, really wants to be champion one more time and would consider the TNA title a major championship of any revel revel uh, relevance in 2007. I believe they were trying to woo him, woo, woo, him back with <laughs> the retirement storyline that would culminate at Russell. Mania. I could be wrong, but I would be stunned if he didn't return in the end. Wow, what uh, is TNA? What is TNA? <laughs> turns out he he does both of these things. <laughs> he, he does, does retire retires and then, in Mania, and then he goes <laughs> to TNA. <laughs> he went to wow. TNA in 2010, though, didn't he? Took yeah, it's, definitely, it's not there. immediately, no. It's not, but yeah. that would be fucking... If he lost to Mania and shows up at Impact next week, <laughs> that would have been amazing. <laughs> uh, we have uh, Figure 4 Wrestling 638 from September 17, 2007. The title of this is TNA something or other. <laughs> Meltzer writes, I really thought this show was hard justice. Honest to God, like it matters. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Did not know what the name of the show was. Uh, he says, my issue was this show was the issue I have with TNA every month, it seems. And that it is great. It's great tragedy of having to make life difficult for everyone involved. If you took out all the bullshit and just concentrated on the bell to bell in ring action, this is, was a really good show. Unfortunately, it's impossible to ignore 
all the bullshit. Oh, damn. With TNA officially going to two hours on October 4th. There you go, Tony. 9 to There's 11 p.m. on Spike. A punishment, if I've ever heard one. <laughs> Jesus. I hereby respectfully call for the following people to be fired from TNA what or at the? least move to other areas of the company where preferably they have no input whatsoever into the product. This is for the good That's of the company fantastic. and thus the good of the wrestling business. So he has a list here of people that he wants fired or moved to a different spot in TNA. Number one, whoops. Vince Russo, <laughs> shocking. Vince Russo says, uh, uh, he, <laughs> Meltzer says he should get a medal as he has sat through every single show that Russo has ever written. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, Jeff Jarrett. He says for not understand, he should get fired for not understanding that Russo sucks and for not learning anything from WCW. Dutch Mantel. He says uh, he's not as bad as Russo or Jarrett, but his writing sucks too. <laughs> Who are you going to have write this show then? I, I'm curious. David Sahadi should also be uh, fired. Uh, he is the re- director, and much like Kevin Dunn, says he misses everything and doesn't get the point. Mike Tanay and Don West. What the fuck? They were he says really t- good. They were tremendous. He says Tanay is past his prime, and Don West became a parody of himself, basically flanderized. Oh my god. <laughs> And lastly, Dave suggests that Sanjay Dutt, Tomko, and Scott Steiner could be a better writing crew. That sounds like an incredible I writing do not team. Disagree. Actually, isn't Sanjay right? Like WWE and then AEW now? He I think he, he does work for AEW now. Yeah, I think he helps with like promos and shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I would love to see a show at Sanjay, Tomko, and Steiner writing. That'd Wasn't be, that just uh, a main event mafia episode of TNA? That's, yeah, probably. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, regarding the illegitimate Sun deal. Which is, of course, the we'll angle talk about Vince, it. We'll talk Vince about had it on an this illegitimate son. We talk about it on this ECW show, yes. Uh, regarding the illegitimate son deal, I would be stunned if this wasn't just a way to prolong the storyline until Kennedy returns from suspension. So Kennedy did not get away from the suspension, Tony. I'm sorry. No. I'm, probably, I'm pretty sure it was Randy Orton. <laughs> the whole deal with Kennedy may have been axed, but my feeling from watching Raw is that it has not. I base this mostly on the original plans, uh, which would have seen Kennedy and Vince team up to try to wrest control of the company oh wrestle control the company from the rest of the family and hunter coming out as the husband of stephanie and siding with her linda and shane they're also being very tight-lipped about where this goes from here which also suggests that hornswoggle as the child isn't the end of this whole thing so it does not end there so spoilers hornswoggle ends up being the kid of <laughs> uh uh, moving on, uh, King Booker is likely done for now. He was the 60-day suspension. Oh, he was, I think he had a 60-day suspension and was outraged. He was pissed because he'd already been suspended once, uh, Meltzer believes around the time where he and Charmel had, uh, had the supposed breakup on SmackDown and he vanished. Uh, then he got a 60-day suspension just because his name showed up on the signature list. I think signature is the name of the company that oh, okay. was doing the, the pharmaceutical shenanigans. He was very close to signing a new long-term contract, but was constantly holding out. He'd made it clear that if he'd been drafted to ECW earlier this year, he would have quit right then and there. <laughs> so would I. No one fucking wanted to go to ECW. Kurt didn't want to go there. I, I, big ups to the big show for eventually getting the there, The big too. show was awesome in ECW. I'm How telling about- you, man, if that run, if ECW, it, the weird part is, man, I, I mean, we'll, we can, we'll get into ECW, but I might as well bring it up here. I feel like if they did that exact same show, with a completely different name, it would probably be something that people are still like clamoring like for. They it would be called, like one of those cold dude, following. Imagine things. this, right? If it would have been like Raw SmackDown and like Heat or something, they'd be like Heat on Sunday. Or like or a, show, make a new fucking show. Yeah, not right. the, and not, not, listen. And there, obviously, there's a lot of things that would have had to change. But I truly feel that fucking Big Show title run would be remembered as like something that was sweet if it happened in something that wasn't something called ECW. I truly believe that. Dude, he was out there putting on like the craziest hardcore matches yeah. like ever, every week defending that title. And there's probably, I mean, if if you were, would I don't know if, God, I mean, Kurt, maybe they still, maybe guys like Kurt and Booker still would have saw it as a demotion, but I still, th- I just think it's that ECW thing had a stigma that people knew that if you go to ECW, there's absolutely a ceiling because ECW will never be anything close to Raw or SmackDown. Yeah, and it's just so, ECW the way that it's, I yeah. don't know. Yeah. Uh, we're told that Matt Seidel, Matt Seidel has signed his WWE developmental contract and will be heading to OVW. That's interesting. Wow. Very interesting. Mr. Bourne, Evan Bourne, and then, uh, and then Matt Seidel again. <laughs> <laughs> this is what he wrote here. Sandman was fired. Bullshit. More next week. <laughs> he doesn't follow up next week, though. 
<laughs> nice. What? That's so weird. I don't know the story there. That's interesting. Uh, Goldberg was on Richard Hunter's radio show in Texas, and when he was asked about TNA, Goldberg said this. TNA totally blows, man. <laughs> I don't think they have a clue as to what people want to see, I think. They've got a very clouded vision. Right after the Benoit death, WWE and TNA had an opportunity to make it right. They had an opportunity. They had everyone's attention. And what does TNA do? They go out and sign Pac-Man Jones! <laughs> 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 that in itself, in a nutshell, describes TNA mentality. TNA's mentality. That is a viable option for Goldberg? Absolutely not. Those guys don't deserve to have me on their program. Dude, there wow. was always rumors around the time Goldberg's going, he's going to TNA. Yeah, there was. There was also, I mean, there was early rumors of Goldberg going to AEW, too. Yeah, wow. I feel yeah. like that always happens, though. I feel like yeah. they teased it on BTE, too, which has made it funnier. Um, and lastly, we have here a special little tidbit about the Vince angle. Uh, WWE actually, WWE actually, I need to reiterate, WWE actually sent out a press release noting that Hornswoggle was Vince's illegitimate son. As they you wanted, do. They, they, yes, you know, this is for true city, you <laughs> bastards. 100% <laughs> true, no lies. So that puts this in a bubble. Uh, everyone hated ECW and TNA at the time, and that's why we were watching. <laughs> no one was happy with either product. <laughs> All right, now it's time to get into the show. WWE ECW, September 4th, 2007. We have a cold open here with a video package. Last week, CM Punk beat The Miz with the go to sleep, earning himself another Not shot just at the ECW the Miz. title. Are you forgetting oh. about Big Daddy oh. and a Boogeyman? They were in the match too? It was a four way. I honestly, I, bl I must have blacked out. They recap it later in the night as well when they do the, okay. the main promo, but it was a four way number one contender. Apparently, at this point, Punk had many title chances, and so he was earning another title yes. chance here. He had like a, a long running program with Morrison, didn't he? I think they have a, because I know they had a match at SummerSlam eventually. I don't know if that was before or after he won the belt. That I know was they had before a long this series one. of that matches, was the, though. Yeah. Did you did you, uh, did you black out? How, how much did you black out during this show? <laughs> did they show the SummerSlam <laughs> they thing, too? They show the SummerSlam match. Listen, later. I write, listen, I watch the shows and I write it down and then <laughs> I remember. All right, black stop, out. I, stop think, out here. I think John Morrison makes you black out. <laughs> You know what? I mean, not. I, I like me a little Johnny Drip Drip. I'm Johnny Drip Drip. John, as well, what yeah. about the Tuesday Night Delight and the Shaman <laughs> is Sexy? And oh, yeah, it's quite the promo the on the show. But yes, of, the Great Salted Bambino. <laughs> <laughs> yes, tonight, uh, ECW Championship is on the line. CM Punk versus John Morrison. And then we go into the ECW intro. Don't question my heart. But it was like the original the, version of it. No, it was kind of cursed. It's the not good version of it, I should say. I don't know yeah. if there is a good version of it. The, you think there's a good other, version of the it? The other one, this one was more butt rock than the other one was. I don't know how to explain. Let's see. August 21st was the first time that song played. Uh, so it must it must have been and then they change it August 28th then they also change it September 4th oh this is actually they when change they, it so they change it on this episode it's the third version of don't question my heart uh, first version was by Jim Johnson and Ka featuring Kyle Morrison the second version was featuring saliva and Brent Smith of Shinedown. That's the one I'm thinking of. I guarantee so this, that's well, no, the one this I'm is the thinking. same one yeah this is version two of that you're thinking of the third version I think okay so there's there's one more version after this version. That's probably uh, very strange. So yeah, this song. Why? Does why not, would they? Do, I don't understand. They have this like, song's very not easy. They just have a good song. They just make a song and they remake it four more times. I don't get it. They do that a lot. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, uh, obviously going from Kyle Morrison, John Morrison's brother, to Saliva. <laughs> that's probably a good move. <laughs> really, but. John Morrison's brother? Whoa. <laughs> yeah, of course. And she, that's cool. Wow. We start this show off with, I got so excited about this, the Boogeyman. I'm the Boogeyman, I'm coming to get ya. The, why, when and why did the Boogeyman start coming out with a wig on? Why not? Was that, why, I guess, yeah, I mean, yeah, but like, He's fucking, it was weird. It just felt strange. So the Boogeyman always, cause I'm trying to remember the Boogeyman's run, and I could not for the life of me rem like, as a guy. You don't remember his matches with Booker T and JBL? Was he an ECW guy first, or was he a SmackDown no, guy first? No, he was a SmackDown guy first. Okay, uh, yeah. then he went over there when Sci-Fi. Okay, I get it. He got demoted it. to ECW. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't uh, remember. Also, uh, uh, James wanted me to let you all know that uh, the same. So the the stage here is the 
you kind of it, it looks familiar to the usual ECW stage, uh, but it has the kind of WCW Nitro 2001 starry background, just kind of filling in space behind because it's not a full stage. It's still a mini entryway, I, but they just covered it in a big starry background. This whole, you know what I'm wondering, because they still have, they're running like with SmackDown, I think, at the time, right? They're doing SmackDown and ECW at the same time. I, it's either that or Raw. It's one of them. So is that, I can't figure out where the other entrance is. is this, unless, unless this, this was thing? when they were, unless they were doing their own ones now. I don't think they were. I don't know. Yeah, I don't I could, know either. Because if they were doing, is a starry background, the question I asked is a starry background covering up the other stage? Oh, maybe. But I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah, that would, I mean, that'd be a good suggestion. But I don't uh, know, good, uh, but I have theory. no yeah. Hey, but, let us know, let us know if we're wrong. But I do like that, you just get some Christmas lights, you hang them up, it looks good. <laughs> yeah, that's sweet, it looked cool. But I do like the LED, the, the little light tunnel thing they have. I yeah, thought that was I like cool. that entryway, it's cool. It was kind it's of cool. not it was, ECW uh, at all, but it's pretty cool, actually. It's, it's close, but it's more so than like what it com become. It eventually just becomes the raw stage with graphics. Yeah, but I, yeah. I still think it's pretty cool. Did you like that the boogeyman used shoot worms? <laughs> shoot worms. It's called PETA. Not on worms. It. I was called PETA on the boogeyman. He absolutely could. Can you call PETA on worms? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, he absolutely could have used worked worms. <laughs> didn't, worked worms? Like gummy worms? Didn't have to, yeah, like anything. <laughs> he absolutely did not have to fucking use real worms. What the fuck? He wanted to <laughs> look no good, man. Dude, that's the only reason he got on TV. Vince, Vince saw the yeah, shoot worms he, and said, you're on TV. He was... I'm not really convinced that Boogeyman actually learned how to wrestle. <laughs> I just think he's a really sweet character. I mean, I, mean, like, I you, like that shit. When you come from the bottomless pit, I mean, how do you learn how That's to wrestle true. down in the bottomless pit? <laughs> uh, Matt Stryker is introduced here as a former social studies high school teacher from Cardozo High School <laughs> in New York City. <laughs> That's his full intro. Dude, what is this song? Like, I remember this song, <laughs> but I don't... <laughs> <laughs> but I don't remember the little quote in the middle, like randomly uh, in the Matt song. I'm Stryker. Hello, you're my a teacher. Yeah, I know you yeah, said I that. that. He yeah. said it on the microphone, but I don't remember I th it playing I, in I his song. I think that was in the games, too. Was it? Okay. I remember I think going, so, yeah. I am Matt So Matt Stryker is doing his entrance here, and he's starting to talk on the mic. They cut to a shot of the boogeyman in the ring. Uh, I will let James's <laughs> notes here describe what it is. James writes, boogeyman throat pie. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, I wrote, yeah, 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 yeah. I wrote it a little less eloquently as he did. I wrote, "Boogeyman has come in his mouth." What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> he is. It just. I mean, it's supposed to be he's foaming from the mouth. I'm pretty sure, but this just looks like he's someone. He bricked in his own <laughs> mouth or something. Mouth. Yeah. <laughs> I thought he just had I mean, whatever, dude, good for you. Yeah. Just fucking swallow this shit, bro. What are you doing here? You're wasting it. <laughs> you're so, not wasting it for. So Matt Stryker yes. cuts the greatest Cody Rhodes promo I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> the omnipotent. <laughs> if I could pontificate. <laughs> He's getting real boisterous with his promo here. Uh, his gimmick was, I use big words you don't understand, yes. so I will explain to you. I will talk down to you. That was Matt yeah, Stryker's Matt Stryker says... Uh, he knows the definition of the words used to describe this man, omnipotent. It means all-powerful. And he says, I want to introduce the most dominant force in ECW, Big Daddy V. And here comes Big Daddy V, Viscera, with his straps <laughs> and his fucking titties. <laughs> He looks so crazy here, but I actually kind of love this look. I, I actually do love this Big Daddy B. I yeah. thought he was crazy. Like you said, he's crazy. He had like, his what? own finisher, too, which was like a <laughs> power slam or something. What the fuck? I don't know what the fuck Big Daddy B <laughs> is or, or what it's supposed to be. You like his theme? I, I actually cars, really cars. like his theme, honestly. Yeah. It does I not think him. Big Daddy V was kind of sweet, actually. <laughs> he's actually really fucking cool. It makes no sense at all. Like, I no. can't, I would never be able to come up with Big Daddy V and the theme song and what he is. I don't know, but I could absolutely, see, in my mind, picture Vince coming up with Big Daddy V. Yeah, you gotta take off that shirt. Yeah. Oh, look at those. <laughs> look at those fucking tits. Those are great. You got like four of them. That's awesome. <laughs> you do the V, the Vader V? Yeah, you V. <laughs> And you're big, and you're V, and 
God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> why, and why he was a mad striker, I don't know. The I mean, mad striker part is probably the most- uh, Of all the things here, shockingly, how fucked he looks, <laughs> how insane this is, this theme song, this outfit, mad striker is the weirdest part of Big Daddy V. <laughs> yeah, I actually do, though. No no joke, soft spot for this Big Daddy V. I kind of like it. Yeah. I kind of like it. They didn't really do much. Like, he, no. does he does he win the ECW title? We do the we do the 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 monster mash thing. Remember that? The the, well, we do do monster mash. Yes, <laughs> the monster battle. Does right Big Daddy V win the title? I don't think he ever. There's no, I don't think so either. He had a feud with Kali, didn't he? Wasn't that his big deal? He had a feud with a couple people. Actually, so here I'll tell you. I'll tell because I wrote this down here. Uh, big Daddy V. Uh, he became Big Daddy V in June of this year, so this is September. So he's, okay. he's still he's, he's been existing for a few months here. Uh, he's in ECW until March of 2008, where he loses to Punk in a Money in the Bank qualifier, and then he's drafted to SmackDown, but never wrestles on SmackDown and is released in August. <laughs> Bro, he, <laughs> yeah, dude, he leaves WWE, and you'll never guess where the fuck he goes. Does he go anywhere? He joins the NWA as King V. Really? And he defeats Rob Conway. To win the belt? No, just defeats oh, Rob Oh, because I know Rob Conway was a champ. He was the Iron Man. And then he defeats Andy Dalton and Joey Spector in a handicap match. And then he goes to JCW Juggalo Championship <laughs> That's, Wrestling. You know what? If there was a place that I would pinpoint that he would go, <laughs> I think it would Juggalo Championship <laughs> Wrestling. <laughs> what? Yeah, so... I, I, I can't like he only ever existed in ECW. I'm sure he was on Raw a couple times because they were doing cross brand stuff. But he was an ECW guy until until he left. He got yeah, released. I think he did stuff with Kane maybe on SmackDown. Yeah, or whatever. I think yeah. so too. Wow. Um. So yeah, keep shutting, cutting the back to shots of the ring. Boogeyman is just drooling jizz every fucking where. As just you do. Looking fucked. So the match begins. Uh, Big Daddy V gets up on the apron to distract the Boogeyman, who then gets attacked from behind by Matt Stryker. Uh, Boogeyman then starts doing Boogeyman moves that he invented. I don't think he actually knows that any of these are real wrestling I moves. Think, I, I think he he's just doing wrestling. them. He does like the craziest stinger splash to Matt Stryker's back that I've ever seen. He just <laughs> runs, jumps, and wiggles in the air like insane. Dude, <laughs> What's at, going on? At one point, Joey Styles asked Taz if Boogeyman ever rode a horse because they were talking about like getting back up on a horse. <laughs> Yeah, Ted, after he ate a horse. Ted says, Ted says, maybe Boogeyman rode one of those giant worms. You know, <laughs> you know, an eel in the water. <laughs> Why? <laughs> what? Joey Styles doesn't even get a ocean, second. Ocean worm. <laughs> you know one of those giant worms underwater? You know, those eels in yeah, the water? Yeah, I love, yeah, eels, the horse of the <laughs> ocean. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, yeah. So eventually we go out of the ring here. Boogeyman is chasing Matt Striker around the ring, and Big Daddy V fucks him in the face that, with a clothesline. Dude, that clothesline spot was so gnarly. He I hit him it. so hard. He that said, might Welcome be one of my favorite. I it, it's overused. I feel like well, that maybe spot? not anymore. But I do love a run around the post get clothesline spot. Yeah. I think that's still good. I feel like in my mind, that's the China spot. I know more yeah, like people have. Yeah. I know a lot more people have done that, but for some reason, I always. Think of like when I think of that spot, I think of China clothesline someone for Triple yeah. H. And yeah. this looked really good here, though. Uh, well, uh, of course, in ECW here, Big Daddy V clotheslines Boogeyman and gets uh gets match record disqualified. Boogeyman wins by TQ. <laughs> this was not uh, your Extreme Rules match of the night. I don't, in fact, of I don't course, think there is one not. actually. There is not at all. <laughs> no, <laughs> no Extreme Rules matches on this episode of Extreme <laughs> Championship <laughs> Wrestling. Uh, Big Daddy V then hits a Samoan drop on the floor on the Big oh, Boogeyman, dude. He, and then uh, Calm starts rolling down <laughs> Boogeyman's face. <laughs> it's just very. He just got so much. <laughs> just he's overflowing with Calm. He's over. He's <laughs> over pumped with Calm. I don't know. It's it looks so time. weird, man. Just, you gotta no. watch this because I'm not exaggerating. That it just looks like. You know when you haven't had sex for a long time, it's building up and it just starts foaming out of your mouth. I have sex all the time, you little oh, fucking yeah. virgin. My bad. <laughs> Fuck you, I hate you, I hate you. Go to hell. Uh, but yeah, no, big, uh, Boogeyman just spitting him, on, foaming and spitting on himself repeatedly. Calling all cards, oh. calling all cards. Yeah. Actually, I'll uh, play it again. And but. then Big Daddy V stands over him and throws up the V, and then that's, uh, we fade to commercial. When we come back, Armando Alejandro Estrada is Dude, backstage. He's the GM. This was a guy who I kind of remember, and then I see him, and I'm like, oh, I totally remember that guy. I, to this day, 
don't understand how he <laughs> didn't have a job forever. Yeah. I feel like Armando Estrada was fucking awesome. And I feel like he was a big part in why Umaga got as over as he did. My God, Umaga. He was so good. He was a great talker. It seems like, he, I guess he was only in WWE for two years. Whoa. Like on TV, yeah. He managed Umaga from 06 to 07, and then he was in ECW from 07 to 08. That's so weird. That's crazy. Yeah, that's really I weird. I think he was so there longer. But I guess not. He became the uh, GM of ECW on August 14th, 2007. Um, and I think he was removed from his position in June of the following year and replaced by Theodore Long. Weird. And then he was like <laughs> booked to be lose to Colin Delaney a bunch. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so Armando Shot is the GM here. Uh, he says. Uh, Punk says he's earned tonight's chance, and Armando says, well, I have an announcement for you, son. Tonight is your last chance at the ECW Championship. Good luck. Punk said, uh, he says, good luck, and Punk looks at him and says, last time I checked, luck was for losers. That was oh, his line back loser, then. loser, 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 loser. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we then go on to another matchup here. Balls Mahoney taking on The Miz with the extreme expose of Layla, Kelly Kelly, and Brooke Adams. Uh, James has a note here for me to say to you all, Layla is elite, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Which, that's goddamn for true. <laughs> <laughs> I do not remember The Miz and extreme expose. What yeah, the it was... Again, I don't think it was a very long time, but I do, I do remember it. Um, the angle here is... Uh, I don't know, really. Kelly Kelly... Um, is Kelly, here and balls. No, balls Mahoney no, is no, like in love with her. This, this <laughs> no, li this was this is exactly how this angle got pitched. Kelly Kelly likes balls. <laughs> is that really? Do they ever say no, that? Uh, no, but or do you think he laughs at that what, when he, they I say? Yeah, maybe right. That's what Vince McMahon. Yeah, Vince is a you're big, probably right. Vince <laughs> Vince was the reason I I think Vince balls. really liked Kelly Kelly, right? Didn't he? I'm he pretty yeah, sure. And I'm sure. He was a big sure Balls Mahoney guy too, I think, did. for some freaking reason and so he's like kelly kelly likes balls i guarantee he was sitting in his chair in his nwo chair <laughs> spinning around <laughs> spinning around repeatedly saying kelly likes balls <laughs> that's i'm surprised they didn't say it on like taz says on commentary and laughs yeah i'm shocked actually yeah, uh but yeah so you. balls mahoney likes kelly kelly and kelly kelly i guess also likes 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 balls uh, kelly kelly likes balls uh Miz comes out here and says, women want me, fish fear me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, God yeah. damn it. <laughs> no, he comes out uh, says, oh, no, never women mind. That's later. That's later. That's later. He says, women want me and, fi and men <laughs> fear me. That's what he says. Fucker. Uh, so the match begins. Miz tries to hit a German suplex on balls. That doesn't quite work out. Uh, then hits clothes on him for a two count. This canvas is... I don't, was it this gross during the Boogeyman match, or is it only gross because of the Boogeyman? I think it's only gross because of the Boogeyman. Slobbering all fucking the worms, worms and, slobber, and yeah. face paint and bullshit all over the <laughs> ring. Uh, Balls hits a Saido suplex on Miz for a two count, and then Miz hits uh, the reality check. I had to look it up because I wasn't sure. I, I think they like, said it on commentary, though. Yeah, they did, and I feel like we kept trying to figure out what the name of that was. Is that the Miser of Oz or whatever? But yeah, what, but what is the Miser of Oz? Because this was the knee into the neck breaker. That's a reality check. The Mizzard of Oz is... Was that little DDT thing they did, wasn't it? Oh, uh, was it? God, I that feel like that's what sucked. it was, wasn't it? Was Maybe. that the, the short little DDT? I don't know. Anyway. Whatever it was, Miz wins with the reality check here. Just really nothing match. Uh, then Miz goes out and grabs the microphone. And Miz gets on the mic and says, wah, wah, wee, wee. <laughs> he does. He says, wee, wee, wah, wee, wah. He says, wah, wah, wee, wah. That's what he says. <laughs> wah, wah, wee, wah, wah. Uh, my wife. <laughs> <laughs> this is my wife, Layla. Uh, I found the, the Miz of Oz move. It's that swinging neck breaker. Oh. Remember you used to, like, wind it up yes, or whatever? Yes. I think he goes for it in this match, too. I think okay. you're right. Yeah. yeah okay. He goes, wah, wah, wee, wah. That's legit what he does. Wah, wee, wah. Uh, and he says, you forgot to announce... That the loser of the match is Balls Mahoney. Well, they never do that, Miz. That's not a thing. Why are you making this up? They don't just... I wish they would, though. That'd be great. That'd be awesome. Just, every match... And the loser! <laughs> <laughs> loser, 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 loser. Uh, so Extreme Expose is laughing at Balls, but Kelly Kelly has a little soft spot for Balls here, and she gets into the ring to check on Balls. Uh, she's concerned. Miz and the Extreme Expose get into the ring, and Miz, uh, Miz pulls her away. says, get away from Balls. Uh, and then they all leave. Because and then they, I cannot get away from balls. I just love balls so much. They try to show this emotional shot here at the end. It's just, it's really, 
I would- I just- it's so fucking stupid. So Kelly Kelly, they're on the ramp, they're leaving. Kelly Kelly is like, looking back with like, you know, a sad face on, concerned for Balls Mahoney. Balls Mahoney is leaning on the second rope, looking like he's gonna fucking cry. Because <laughs> Kelly Kelly is not staying with him. This sucks. <laughs> they try so to give Balls some weird. depth and character or whatever here, but he's a dude it's not who working. wore fucking Kelly Kelly's like 18 work. here. Balls dude. Mahoney looks 52. <laughs> Balls has like these fucking shorts that Balls is wearing. I still don't they're understand. Just, they're like Nick Gage. It's the same style Nick they're Gage. Cut he's wearing all purple. the way up to the top. He's also wearing a purple singlet under it. He's wearing a singlet, and the jeans aren't even like together. They, <laughs> he cuts them all the way down the side. Yeah, no, they're, they're I don't fucked. Even understand yeah. it. It's so fucked. Ugh. We uh, we cut to the commentators here. Taz is in a pink button-down shirt, and Joey Styles is you know just being Joey Styles or hyping up the rest of the show here. And then they go to a backstage promo with John Morrison. What do you got? What do you got to say about this promo, Tony? He's the guru of greatness, the icon of infinity, the sultan of secular, the president of perfection, the baron of bruising. We uh, are who we are. <laughs> Hey man, uh, more, John Morris yeah. got more promos than anyone else on this show. Dude, I, I, like he says a lot of weird shit. But if this was cut down like by maybe a minute, this would have been a pretty decent promo. It just went on a little long. He says, uh, "I gave you people a champion to believe in, an avatar." And it doesn't matter what you say, punk, because words are only illusions. They were really leaning on the Jim Morrison thing here. Yeah, for uh, sure. He says, "You are a loser. You look depressed. You don't, you don't look like a champ. You hardly look like a man." He says, "I am beyond good and evil." You look like a straight edge blink 182 groupie. <laughs> <laughs> he says, I'm the Tuesday night delight, the shaman of sexy, and tonight the time has come for your greatest and final failure. And this last line is very strange. I think you just got too wordy here. I am going to prove why I'm the greatest CCW champion once and for all forever. <laughs> <laughs> Always. <laughs> Who's your favorite all time forever? <laughs> He's foreshadowing, right? He's gonna lose. Yes. Yeah, fuck it. They they made it so obvious that Punk was winning tonight. You'll never get another chance ever, and I'm gonna be champion forever until ECW dies. <laughs> yes. End of times. Then we go on to the Raw recap, because this is the era of ECW, and I feel like maybe this is forever, actually. Maybe I just forgot about it, where they spend five minutes of the 45 minutes uh, recapping Raw from the night before. <laughs> yeah, they, is... they used to do like the SmackDown rebounds and the Raw rebounds. Yes, and stuff they like did that. both, right? Yeah, you're right. But not to this extent where they literally like play the opening promo for the next episode of Raw. Dude, it's pretty much just a Raw advertisement. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is all about the Vince illegitimate son thing. Uh, Linda comes out, and I guess at one point Vince, maybe on SmackDown, I think it was, like brought out a bunch of his like. Uh, secretaries that he yeah. fucked. Yeah. So, so, so Vince says it's all, Vince says all about the money. That's why my family's trying to get after me. And then Linda goes, "I don't need your money." And then Vince's assistant came out and paraded all these women that he slept with. That was the deal there. He parade like brings them out on TV. I fucked all of them. It was Mandy Van Dam there, Jenny Jensen. <laughs> they were Jenny all Jensen. there. Mandy Van Dam. <laughs> yeah, they were all there. Wow. Uh, and then Linda McMahon comes out to confront him about this, and she says, I can fucking take you to the court for everything you got for showing off them fucking whores. Yeah, that <laughs> was wow. pretty dumb of him. Ah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I wasn't thinking of that. Uh, then Stephanie comes out. Vince calls Stephanie a hellcat. <laughs> I don't know what that fucking even means. As you Stephanie do. says, listen. Look here, listen, I love you, but you're fucking sick in the head, you freak. You need serious <laughs> help. God damn it. You can't keep doing this to our family. This I, this is probably part, like, work and part shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, Shane comes out to join his family. He says, we're not here to stand against you. We're here to stand behind you, but you need to change. And then Vince finds it in his heart, and he says, I feel like I can change. I feel like humbling myself before you. I will be a, 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 a better father. I vow I will be a better Husband and a better human. Kennedy. Kennedy. <laughs> Ken Kennedy comes out here and he says, "Hey, I'm your son. <laughs> we don't you notice that your middle name is my last name? Wink, wink. Nudge, nudge. He says, Mister Kennedy." McMahon. I actually kind of bobbed it that one. That was a good one. I can't like. It's so weird because he was like destined to be their guy. Dude, he's not even in like mainstream pro wrestling no. right now. 
Like no. he was the guy back then. He like, disappeared. He was- I mean, he does a TNA run, but it does not like amount to anything he does here. No. He was he fucking they Vince wanted to make him his son. His his career like you can't fire him after that. You can't fire him. They were he's do made, the he's with, a made man. With like the McMahons and he was gonna be a part of the McMahon yes. feud and the McMahons is always the most important thing on the WWE show. Him and Vince, the angle was him and Vince were gonna take over the company and he was gonna feud with Triple H. He was the man he was gonna be the guy. What the fuck? So, and like they did, I think the suspension thing was really where it first took a hit, and then the he gets injured a couple times after that. And then he makes a YouTube uh, video, and uh, it didn't go. Over he made well. a YouTube video. Remember, didn't he hurt like Randy Orton or something? And then oh, he, he like hurt his yeah, hand or something, and then he like right. came on YouTube and like shook his hands off. This was during like Zack Ryder's yeah, YouTube. Yeah, that's right. Because like was everybody weird. was, everybody's trying to do YouTube because Zack Ryder got popular on YouTube. So he's like, oh, I'll wasn't do the Zack Ryder thing after that? This might have been a dot com thing you're thinking of, like Dirt Sheet maybe. No, he just did his own YouTube channel. Oh, he did his own thing. Yeah, like he after yes, he got okay, released, yeah. he did like a yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about while he was in the company. I no, so he okay. hurt like so Kennedy's thing was like I think he hurt Randy Orton or something, right? Wasn't that what yeah, happened? Yeah, because they did that remember they did that seven on seven like Lakers sump match? <laughs> yeah. And like yeah. he fucking hurts Randy taking an RKO somehow. I don't remember what it was. He it was like hurt weird. Randy and he supposedly like hurt himself too or something. Yes, they both got hurt. And so then he came on YouTube and did like a video where he like he sh- shook his hand or something like he was like waving it because it's like not hurt and then he like uh, he tried to like make a okay. big deal. Out. I don't even know. Yeah, but, man, but dude, he was he was fucking money in the bank. He was going to win the belt. He was going to be like even after they segued the Vince Sun thing to Hornswoggle, he was still getting a push. He was the fucking money in the bank. And yeah. then they had they had Edge beat him for it, and then he's gone. That's so it's un- weird. It's dude. it's unbelievable, man. Like. There's a timeline where Ken Kennedy is probably still a WWE champion, and he's Mr. Kennedy McMahon. That's, That's so crazy. It's, it's, it sounds cursed, but it was a real thing. Um, so Kennedy hits that line. Then a guy uh, walks out on the stage, and he starts <laughs> talking. He says, hey, um, he's like saying his name. And in the middle of him saying his name, Vince loudly on the microphone says, hey, who are you? Hey, <laughs> who are you? <laughs> he's explaining who he is. Uh, the best guy to represents- describe this guy is the, yeah. the, the, a guy. Some he's just a guy. guy. He's just a guy you never see before. He comes out. He says, uh, it, this is the guy that represents the woman that had Vince's illegitimate son. Do we ever find out who that was? I don't know. This whole storyline is a blur to me, honestly. Uh, He says that Kennedy isn't Vincent's son, and we'll find out on the next week's Raw who it is. And he has a small clue to give on who his son is. Things are looking up. Get it? You get it? Do you get it? He says it's a small clue. (laughs) It's a very small man. (laughs) Hornswoggle. (laughs) I don't want to be short with you, but things are looking up. Huh? What does that mean? So we move on here to our next contest. It is Elijah Burke and Kevin Thorne taking on Stevie Richards and the goddamn innovator of wrestling, Tommy Dreamer. Don't That's waste my, uh, yeah. my time. Dude, that theme was awesome. I thought Elijah Burke was sweet, That's actually. Another, dude, there's this whole, like, 2007, This is an 2008. era of failed stars. Dude, Big <laughs> like, Show's ECW run, this Elijah yeah. Burke, freaking... Uh, it's failed because of them. Like, there's no reason why Elijah Burke couldn't have been a bigger deal. Unless no. he just had, like, a shitty attitude or something. But I think he was sweet. He had a great look. His theme was cool. Even when he uh, banned the Pope. The Pope is pimping. I still thought that was yeah, cool. Yeah, even TNA didn't handle him right, though, either. Because he never really gets a big push there. I mean, he's, like, they consider him a main eventer for a little bit. But, like, he never really does much. Whatever happened to Sylvester Trikai? Remember he was with Elijah Burke? I don't know if he is before or after this, but he goes to Japan. I'm pretty sure he does, like, that work shoot fighting for, a, I think it was Anoki. Oh, really? Wow, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So I didn't um, know this was a tag match when it first started. I was like, yeah, oh. I was like Elijah Burke and Kevin Thorne. That's a weird match, but I was like, oh, okay, I see. They uh, they show last week Kevin Thorne beat Stevie Richards by hitting him with the Tower of London. Uh, Joey Styles on commentary says there's a turf war in the locker room between the new and old ECW guys. We're really getting into the new breed. This must be the beginnings of the new yeah, breed. Yeah, I think so. The new breed. Corvon isn't here yet, right? And Matt Striker is in it eventually, and Punk joins it for like two weeks. I'm yeah. pretty sure later on. Um, but that's like, I think that's closer to Mania. So we still got a little ways to go. Yeah, for sure. 
Um, Kevin Thorne out here without Ariel, son of a bitch. Uh, What's Tommy the Dreamer point? Why out, are you here? Even out here. Why are you I know, out here? I know. What's the point? Tommy Come Dreamer's on. hair looks insane here. <laughs> just it's long, this but short. I don't know what's going on. Tommy here. Dreamer <laughs> just won't get out of my life. <laughs> Come on, he innovated Deadlock. Why would you not be happy? There's no. If it wasn't for Tommy Dreamer, this show wouldn't happen. And you know that's true. Dude, it started out as a young punk kid in high school, and Tommy Dreamer <laughs> just wouldn't leave me alone. <laughs> You're Raven? Tommy Dreamer was a jock. <laughs> Tommy Dreamer stole outcast. your girlfriend? Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> you love the Cuddy. I'm still Tony mad. Loner guy. <laughs> uh so again, not not too much to call here. Elijah hits a cool like clothesline STO combo on Tommy, which I thought was dope. Yeah. Eventually all hell breaks loose here. Dreamer and Kevin Thorne go to the floor and Elijah hits the Elijah Express. Or if you're Taz, it's the Elijah Express. <laughs> <laughs> He says it multiple times. Oh, it's the Elijah Express. <laughs> this is how Daz talks. It's all right. <laughs> I, love, I love that fucker. They, so Elijah gets a win. I also thought that was a cool move. The it's, running knees. Yeah, it's definitely. To the back. It's like no one else does it. I don't think I've ever seen. Like, who else does that move? I think I he could have did it out of the corner and probably would have looked even cooler if he just got like a little explosion out of it. You know, like kind of like Brian's knee, but oh, from yeah, behind. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, the Busaiku yeah. knee that, to the yeah. back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'd like it though. It's good. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Elijah and Kevin Thorne get the win here just beating up these fucking old ECW guys. Really nothing to write home about. Uh, we get a hype video for the main event of the CM Punk John Morrison feud, which Tony tells me they showed a SummerSlam kipping yeah, here. Yeah, this think was I the SummerSlam John Morrison for CM Punk promo package that just plays here. The whole promo package. So we have the CM Punk versus John Morrison ECW title matchup here. Taz on commentary is actually putting this belt over pretty big here. He says winning the ECW title was the most important thing he's ever done, which I thought was like cool way to like make this feel special. Yeah, t- of course. Having Taz put it over, he's like, I love winning this belt. It was awesome. It means a lot. If you're not trying to win this belt, what the hell are you yeah. doing in this company, brother? I thought this was a good match too, man. And they near like the last five. I don't know how long it went. Like the last portion of the match, the crowd is firing up for this match too. I feel like they were dead most of the show. Yeah, like but they, they got were. into this. They, uh, yeah. Punk. I was watching the CM Punk DVD because I was. I was what is this the, the match where he says it was like their only good match? Was he, it this one? Yeah, he buries the entire like. Beginning feud. He hated had. their other fucking. And he like he said he like actually, we never had a good match. He said that this match was like magic, and he didn't know why it was the way it was. It was just awesome, and it goes down as one of his favorite matches of all time. That's crazy. It was a good match too, though. Morrison uh, goes for a sunset flip to the floor on Punk. Punk reverses and hits like a spring, like kind of an acai splash on Morrison like on Punk, just right to the floor. Maybe Punk didn't do this a lot, but I remember maybe in the video game he used to do this. Was that in the that video move, game? That move that was definitely one of his moves in the video game. Yeah, yeah in like 08 or 07, what 08. You know what? I was actually thinking of this and I hate to say this because I love CM Punk. But do you know what the first video game Punk was in? 08. <laughs> It's fucking 08, Tony. But... They went downhill after CM Punk got put into the games. They were never the same, Tony. Actually, it was the WF No Mercy Ring of Honor mod. Oh, oh he was in that. Yeah, oh, yeah. Forever Indie? Forever Is that what you're talking Indie. about? No. Or well, TNA versus ROH? Yeah, that one. one, one, that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, I love those mods. Yeah, Those are so good. I, you know what? They probably still work. We should we should play those. We should find those. Those are good. Dude, I spent so much time playing those, especially Forever Indie, because I was like... So into the independent, like not that I'm not now, but I was like, like disgustingly addicted to the indies at that point. So like being able to play those games as all these people that, like, that I figured I would never play in a WWE game unless yeah. I played them. I was like, wow, this feels like sick. And I love No Mercy. Somehow, even then, I think that was like. 2005. Yeah. So somehow I knew how to work an emulator then and get like mods working. I don't know how Bro, I did it. It was so hard back then. You, it had was to so like, hard. you had to get so many files and like inject these files into your ROM and it was all this. Sweet, like changing sh- the, the rice plugins and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, I fucking fucked. hate it all. You had to I have still like fucking hate it. Folders and folders of all this shit yeah. and try and get to it. And then and like I, if you did it wrong, like everyone looked like a pink pirate. Like, oh, yeah. god damn it. <laughs> god damn it. <laughs> and there, was, there was like this busted ass six sided ring that almost. Oh, Oh yes! See, that was in the TNA ROH one. I do remember that. The you could like see ring. through part it of the kinda ring. It kind of worked, dude. For what it was for the time, it was cra- it was fucking like, the crazy. The physics weren't there yet. I think you still yeah. ran like four sides, yeah. but it was almost there. But oh. it, visually, it was enough for me. Shouts it, out to the No Mercy Zone. I think that still exists. Oh, No Mercy uh, Zone, dude. Let's that's go. where I got all. That's what I, dude. I grew up on yeah. the fucking No Mercy Zone, man. Uh, all those mods. Shouts out. I think, uh, I think it was like I forget the guy's name. ICC. I think like 
I I oh, I can't remember his name. I'm sorry, but I know H I W was a forever indie guy. I think the guy that made did the TNA ROH one might have been the same one that did the WWF Legends one that I played oh, recently. Okay, yeah, yeah. It might be the same guy, maybe not. But shouts out to the. Sorry if I fucked. Your, I'm sorry I fucked your name up, but definitely if you uh, are into modding, go back and play because I, I think TNA versus ROH was officially the first fully like modded release, like wow, a, a game yeah, that like yeah. he put out like you could play like a fully mod thing, and then Forever Indie was after. I'm pretty sure. This is so good. Yeah, brings back all the anyway. Women. Uh, back, so actually, it probably, you know, it probably, it definitely was a couple years before this. Um, back to the match here. Punk goes for the springboard clothesline, but Morrison hits the flare bump on him, pulls him down off there. Dude, uh, Punk, I, I, I actually really like this, uh, which I don't see a lot in matches. This was Punk's last chance to get the ECW title, so yeah. he was going for pins off of, like, any move that Everything, he possi- yeah. Like, he would do roll up here, do he was this, desperate. do that, do a clothesline, go for a pin, sure. and get, like, a one count. It was, it yeah, was yeah. good. I think that's why the fans were so into it. Because yeah. I mean, I they said definitely it. started, especially near the end. They started biting on everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Punk's laying on the apron. Morrison kicks him right in the face, like from the floor. He just oh. launches his leg up and kicks him <laughs> in the fucking head. Uh, Morrison leaps into the ring from the apron and drop kicks Punk, who is sitting on the apron, like facing inside. So it's kind of like inverted the Naito drop kick. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he like kicks him right to the floor. It's really cool. Uh, Morrison goes to hit Punk with a backbreaker combo. Punk reverses it for into a pin for a two and then gets hit in the head with a knee. Just a lot of hits to the head here for yeah. Punk. Uh, Punk goes to the top with Morrison and even even now, he, like even if Punk does this at fucking All Out, every time Punk goes to the top rope with somebody, I swear he's going for the plunge. I just swear he's going for <laughs> yeah, it. It's yeah. just every goddamn time, man. Yeah. Uh, but instead, Punk uh, hits a superplex. It was a good looking superplex too. Uh, yeah, it was good. It sounded uh, Punk cool hits, too. Punk hits the knee in the corner, followed by the bulldog for a two count. I always love that combo. Punk then goes for the welcome to Chicago, motherfucker, but gets backed into the corner. Morrison hits a Pele to the head. I don't think they would have called it that in WWE. I don't know if they called it at anything actually. I don't no, know if they didn't. move it. You they know the backbreaker. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Morrison hits the Starship Pain for a two, and the crowd's like, "Ooh, okay." Corkscrew moonsault. They call it. Were they not calling it Starship Pain yet? Oh, I thought they. Oh, did they not name it yet? Maybe I mean, not. Maybe, they, it's too maybe soon, Taz yeah. just didn't know. I think Taz yeah. called Corkscrew. Well. Taz didn't know much. I don't think. Uh, <laughs> Johnny, did you see the little kid in the crowd? There was a kid like front row. He was chanting CM Punk. He was wearing no. the worst T-shirt I've ever seen. It was just. It was just. <laughs> a, was it? it was a black T-shirt with a picture of Bald Kane on it. Just like Bald, bald Kane. Kane. Like Kane, you know <laughs> Kane. Just, <laughs> just Kane. Yeah. Just a picture of Kane. That was it. <laughs> That's all that was on the shirt. Not, you it didn't say find Kane. It. it didn't even say Kane. It just had a picture. You think of it was Kane. a WWE release or was it a bootleg? It could have been a Walmart type. You know, oh, like Walmart used to release those they, weird shirts. They still release weird fucking shirts, actually. But it was just a picture of Bald Kane, and that, that was pretty. <laughs> I'm going to wear that to all out. Bald Kane. <laughs> Uh, Morrison goes for the Moonlight Drive, Punk counters and goes for the GTS, but Morrison rolls Punk up, holds the tights and the ropes, but the referee catches him. Uh, Punk rolls up Morrison for a two, the crowd is fucking losing it at this point. Uh, Punk hits a step up in Zagiri on Morrison. Morrison goes for the Tidal Wave, you know, the, uh, what's Cody fucking call that? Disaster Kick. Punk dodges that, picks him up, GTS, CM Punk wins the ECW goddamn championship. This match is sweet, man. It's about damn time. We want MC win it right away, but Yeah. And this is uh his trigger. first championship in the WWE and on commentary, I think it's Joey Styles that says CM Punk has just carved his name into the annals of sports entertainment history. Oh wow. no. What a cursed line. Up to <laughs> sports entertainment along with ECW. Yeah. Uh, I know. ECSP <laughs> or ECSE. Yeah. So oh, wow. so the referee in this match was that Brad Armstrong? I think it was, was Scott that? Armstrong. Scott Armstrong. Okay. Yes. So who is that, later involved in the I think I think he's later involved in the angles where like Punk is getting either fucked over or he's he's on Punk's side. I think he was like kind of the authorities ref for a minute. Okay, uh, yeah. the only reason I mentioned him is because they were talking about the the uh, the Punk's stuff on the documentary I was watching yeah. again, and he was on there for some reason. Yes, yes, and he 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 was basically said Punk should have never been world champion. He didn't like that Punk was world champion. Damn, he said. He said uh, Punk was the kind of guy who you didn't know if he was going to park your car or steal your car. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell, He just man? didn't look like a world champion. He's like, you see like a guy in a, in a, in a suit, like Ric Flair and Triple H, and then you see CM Punk. He should have never been a world yeah, champion. Yeah, well, you can go to hell, Scott Armstrong. <laughs> God damn you. That was pretty damn funny. Oh. I wonder if he still feels that way. Maybe he was just holding resentment then. He was a company guy. Yeah. Does he still like, work there? I don't know. Does he? I don't know either. I'm not All sure. Right. 
What's going on with Scott Armstrong these days? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not positive. But yeah, there you go. CM Punk uh, beats Morrison to win the ECW title. Uh, I think I think that's the only time he wins it. Because then he Punk holds that title until January 22nd, 2008, where he loses the belt to Chavo uh, in a no-DQ match. Wow. So Chavo was on the SmackDown roster at the time, so the belt was shared between SmackDown and ECW. And then after that, Kane beats him for it in, like, two seconds at Mania. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. Don't bring that up. <laughs> yeah. So Punk had a 143-day reign, I believe. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. Not bad. It's okay. Yeah. Um, so I looked up Scott Armstrong. He was, like, go during the 2020 uh, let go. That's okay. Yeah. So. He's probably in AEW right now. <laughs> Sanjay <Dutt. laughs> Probably. <laughs> but there it was. ECW on Sci-Fi. WWE ECW September 4th, 2007. Shout-outs to Big Daddy V.